Oh no! How are we gonna get across? Don't worry, Princess Peach. I've got a plan. What plan could you possibly have against this, Mario? Ah! Whoa! There's too many bad guys! Princess Peach, you won't be able to get away from me! You're going to marry me! Ew, no! What would make you think I would want to marry you, Bowser? Fine! Then I'll destroy your kingdom! No, you won't, Bowser. Mario, hurry, there's two! Hmm, think, 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 think. We're going to need to get big. How do you suppose we'll do that? Ha, 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 ha. Get big, you say? Ah, 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 ah. Whoa! <sighs> You're coming with me, Princess Peach! The Mushroom Kingdom works together. You'll never be able to take over us, Bowser. So how about that plan, Mario? Well, I don't have a plan. Bowser's way too big for us now. I have a plan. Princess Peach, incoming Mushroom! Perfect. I'll get big. Not big enough. <laughs> Fine. Try another one. Now that's more like it. Whoa! OMG! It's a big Princess Peach! Princess Peach, you're giant! Let's venture out into the world of Mario and Princess Peach by making an OMG doll of Princess Peach using Kawaii Queen's OMG sister. I agree. I need a makeover. I'm not really happy with my hair color, so I want to change that, and I really want to look like a princess. And we can definitely help you with that. The Super Mario movie came out April 5th, and to have fun with it, let's do an OMG-inspired Princess Peach doll. Starting off with cutting off all of Prism's hair. All of you OMG doll makeover fans, here's a fun fact for you. This is actually the very first OMG makeover I'm doing for 2023. And I think it's a good start to make someone entirely new like Princess Peach. So we're gonna keep her head in this warm to hot water for about five minutes. And that'll get the plastic soft enough for us to take her head off. All right, that's good enough. Let's get her on out. I'm gonna put a towel over here so we don't make everywhere completely soaking wet. Here we go. Okay, now it should be easy to take her head off. There ya go. All right, folks. This right here is gonna be your new best friend. I didn't notice I splashed water on the camera lens. So while he's here, let's just name him Quagmire. All right, back to the makeover. Okay, now I'm gonna remove all of her jewelry because it's time to give her a haircut. I'm gonna use these tiny scissors to go really close to her head and get as much of the hair as I can off. That way it'll be easier for us later when we have to pluck out all the remaining hair with some tweezers. So here's as close as I can get it to her head. I'm going to remove the rest of the hair with my tweezers. Here we go. I'm gonna try something new, something that won't be so hard on the hands. The tweezers are a little difficult. I'm gonna try and use a screwdriver and see if that'll help get the hairs out a little easier. <gasps> what do you know? It actually works. Okay, let's do this method. And it's so much easier on your hand. Cool. All right, from now on, we are definitely using a screwdriver to get the hair out of our doll's hair. Oh yeah, and remember, always before doing any craft project, get the help of a grown-up because we're dealing with stuff like this, like sharp stuff and hot stuff, and I don't want any of you getting hurt. All right, now we're gonna remove the paint that she has on her head with some pure acetone. So it's basically nail polish remover, but 100%. So I'm just gonna get a little cotton swab and get some acetone on here, and this will get the paint right on off. All right, at this point, I'm gonna get the rest of the hair that was inside of her head out. We're gonna use a spoolie for that. Here's that bit. It's just gonna give us a cleaner area to work with when we add our new hair. 
And plus, once we glue everything in, we don't want extra unwanted hair in there that could maybe poke out, especially since it's a bright color like blue. And we're going for yellow, which is Princess Peach's color. Let's see how much we get out. Whoa, that was a big one. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add just a little bit of fabric tack and spread it around the spoolie so we have it on all the sides. And this is gonna give us a nice sticky spoolie. Swirl it around and give it a twirl. Oh, I think we did. I think we got that big old chunk of pink that I was seeing. All right, I think I've got almost all the hair out and here's everything that was in her head. I'm glad we took it out. Big, giant, floofy poof. It's almost enough to reroot another doll's hair. All right, time to move on. Big on, floofy hair. Oh, it's still there. We must exterminate it. It's like we're the Ghostbusters of hairballs. Now I'm going to take a buffing block and buff her head so that when I get some paint on here, it'll stick nice and well and it won't flake off. All right, so now we've got a nice gritty surface for the paint to cling onto. I'm going to use this real yellow. Now you can see that the paint is still a little see-through. This isn't going to be the only layer. I'm going to add maybe one to two more layers on here and then we'll be ready to reroot. And to reroot, I'm using this doll hair wig. And I have more than enough for an OMG head. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to find the long pieces because this wig has some bangs and I don't want the banged parts. I'm gonna get a long piece like this and I'm just gonna cut it. And this will be several strands for us to use and reroute. Now I'm gonna take a tiny little strand, about that much is good. I'm gonna get this on my rerouting tool and scoop it up. The rerouting tool has two heads. So it's got two little prongs and in between is where the doll hair goes. And I'm gonna hold it down with my hand like that and give her her first strand of hair. Just like that. She looks so beautiful. Now what I like to do is wet the hair. I find it much easier to reroute and then at the end you're not left with this big old ball of hair that's unusable. So this way when the hair's wet, I can use almost all of the hair. So I put some water in a spray bottle and I just spray it out. And then I use this comb and comb the water through the hair just to make sure all the strands are wet enough and not tangled. All right, let's give her a full head now, super speed. Another little trick that also helps me in rerouting hair is using this clay tool. What I do is if the hole is a little too small for my rerouting tool to fit through and it keeps on either breaking needles or pushing the needle back into the rerouting tool, what I do is I poke this into the doll's head to make the hole a little bit bigger and it always seems to help.
right, I've rooted all of her hair. Now it's time to glue the new hair down. Here we go. We're gluing everything down with some fabric tack. Now I'm gonna swish the glue around in her head so I don't have a whole head of glue. I just need the glue to stick whatever we've rooted. Okay, now we just let her sit for about two hours. I'm gonna put her head upside down so we can get all the glue where we need it. And we're back! It's been more than two hours. It's actually been like 10 hours. So her hair should be totally dry now. And now we can start cutting her bangs and seeing how much more hair we need. I'm gonna move her bangs downtown. And let's see. It's going to be pointing down like a little tiny triangle. Kinda like Mavis's hair from Hotel Transylvania. And I might even have to boil wash this so the hair can stay down. Just so I can see how much bangs I need. Here's the amount of bangs I want to cut. And I think once I do this, I'm gonna boil wash this to have these bangs lie down. And I think right here is where we're gonna need more hair because she's gonna have this big old whopping bald spot. So I'm gonna bring you guys along the boil washing journey. It is a pretty magical process. Here we go with her big old head inside the bowl. I'm just gonna hold it like this so I have a little bit more control. And you see how poofy her hair is right now? Well, poof be gone. I'm gonna get some hot, hot boiling water on her. Be careful not to burn myself. It's a very dangerous process and definitely should not be tried at home. Beedle, beedle, beedle. I'm just gonna slosh her hair around in the water because why not? Let's just get all of her hair in here. My goal was just the bangs, but it looks like we're boil washing all of her hair. Look at the amp. We're definitely gonna need to fix it. So for that, we're gonna need an empty spray bottle and I'm just gonna get some random conditioner. Hello. And I'm gonna get a little bit on there. Okay, that's a whole lot of it. Okay. And some water. That's it. So uh, now I'm just gonna shake a shake this, even though I didn't leave any room to shake a shake. Am I gonna get the conditioner to disperse in there? He's just gonna keep on shaking. Chunky. Got dry, tangled hair that no comb can even comb through. Try chunky conditioner with no label. Just like magic, your comb would be able to comb through. <gasps> oh, and now's a good time to give her a nice trim and get those ends sleek and clean. For this part, I'm gonna use some clear glue to get it tamed and neat, just like I did with Spice's OMG sister. And then we're gonna cut it into that Mavis, Spice, Shadow, that type of bang. You can see it's just regular school glue. I just kind of get way a little bit on my painter's palette. Okay, that's a whole lot of bit. It's always a whole lot of bit with me. Maybe I should just start saying that. Then just a flat headed brush. And let's -a go. Okay, now we're gonna see how this looks. Okay, I think that's good enough.
Let's make her a crown out of warbla. The warbla is really hard right now, but we're gonna change that with some heat. First, I'm gonna draw the crown out. Her crown just has four prongs, so one, two, we've got prongs like this. I think that's about right. So I'm gonna cut this out, and then to form it however shape I want it, I'd have to warm it up. So when I fold it in, it should be like that. Okay, it's small. It's small. Ugh. That's okay. Cause here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make another one. Same size, same shape, everything. And then we're just gonna add it to itself. When we add some heat, it'll become sticky. Okay, let's add some heat now with my heat gun. And now I can take the pieces and add them to each other. And then I just need a wee little bit right here. I think I'm gonna have it be this big. Okay, that's good enough. And then cut the rest off. Now I'm going to paint this gold. I've got two golds. I think I want to use this one. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take a top coat, add that to my crown. This is gonna kind of fill in the bumpiness and the texture of the warbler. And the goal is to have a smoother texture. I'm gonna quickly cure this under my little lamp. Now, since I have a sticky layer on top because of the top coat that I added, this will stick better to it. So let's go ahead and try it out. I like how it already has a little applicator in it. Okie dokie. Oh, this is a little darker than I thought it was gonna be. It's uh, almost, it's almost like a bronze. Let's try this other one. I think this is more of a gold. Yeah, these golds are different. They're not as bright as I want them to be. But that's okay, let's try it out. So I'm gonna dab, dab, dab into the powder and then get it on here. Ooh, that's pretty. Dab, dab, dab. We've got our golden crown. I'm gonna seal this in. This time I'm gonna use a top coat that's not sticky so we don't have to wipe it with alcohol. So here we go. We're gonna seal the pretty gold in. And then I'm gonna cure it under my lamp. For the jewels on her crown, I'm gonna use some Sugru. It's this stuff. It's moldable silicone. Oh, it's not opening. I've never worked with this stuff, so I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but it's supposed to be permanent, just like epoxy. And it sets in 30 minutes. So let's take a little bit and get it on her crown. She has three jewels on there. So one in the middle, that's red, and two blue on the sides. set for 30 minutes and then we can come back and paint this but while this is setting I'm going to do the most fun part of this makeover and that is her face up yes we're not keeping this face so I'm going to completely remove it with some nail polish remover
gems to look like real gems and to look really shiny. So I'm going to get the same top coat I used for the chrome powder on here. Looks like I've got some of that chrome powder still left over on here. Oopsies. Oh well, it'll give it some extra glitter and shine. And then I'm going to cure it. Here we go, nice and shiny. All right, time to get her head back onto her body. And now we can secure her crown onto her head. I'm gonna do that by using some sewing pins. They have a little ball on the end that'll prevent the crown from moving around. Using some resin, I'm going to add these metallic beads that are the perfect color for Princess Peach. Bertha! Well, what do you know? Bertha's back! She just went on a very quick vacation. Okay, a very long vacation. We did a couple OMG makeovers and I didn't use Bertha. I just hot glued the outfits on. You know, keeping it easy. But Bertha's back. And here is the patterns I'm going off of. Let's see, did I make a bodice pattern? <laughs> That's Ken stuff. What is Ken stuff doing in here? Princess Peach is going to have a bodice part which is going to cover her front and back and then she has poofy sleeves. Very poofy princess sleeves. And we're just gonna kinda go along with the pattern and maybe make a new pattern if we need it and see how this thing comes together. So we're not gonna need the arms. So the front is one piece, the back is two pieces because we're going to have a Velcro closure. And for the fabrics, I went ahead and picked up these two colors because Princess Peach has both of these colors. So for her top, I'm going to use the lighter pink. Oops, this is for use with stretch fabric. This fabric definitely has no stretch. So I'm going to have to find a new pattern. I think this might be the one I'm looking for. So we have a shirt arm. I'll use it even though I don't need this shaped neck. I'll just work around it. Okay, so I'm going to draw a pattern on here with some chalk. It's a fabric pencil. For her poof sleeves, I'm going to use this hot pink and also for the poofiness in her skirt. She's got like these two things like a bell that comes down her skirt. I'm going to use this fabric as well. So uh, let's see, how are we going to do this? I don't know. I just, I don't know. She's like a tulip. Her dress is like a tulip. Let's think. Let's think. What would someone that's not super good at sewing do to get the shape of a bell sleeve? I've done it before on Peppa from Encanto. I know it's something like this. Like you go like this, do 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 do, like that, right? Mm -hmm, right? So that we can gather and make it all big and poofy. I'm gonna give some seam allowance because this is where we're going to sew. And uh, this is where we're going to scrunch it up and gather. I think like this. And for the tulipy parts, I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be this shape, I think. I think. Because we're gonna scrunch it up a little bit, just a little bit, up top here. So we want to create like a little U shape. And then I'm going to give some seam allowance. Perfect. We're going to need four of these because I'm going to have two sewn together so that we could have nice edges and stuff. So I'm going to fold this because this is going to give us two. But when I fold it again like this, it's going to give us four. All 
right, and to get this to curve the way we want it to, I'm gonna add small little tiny snips all along this part so that it can curve right and not bunch up. I'm going to use this circle skirt pattern for her, but it's definitely going to be longer. I'm not sure if I have enough fabric here, as you can see, but I might. I think this will work out. Here's that. We don't want it this short. I think I want to go maybe around there. As far as this length of fabric will go. And here we are, it's the basic part of the top. I'm going to make her neck part, and for that, I'm going to use this lace. Yep, it's not the color of Princess Peach's neck part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that diva pink. Now I'm gonna connect the skirt to the top. I've made a little marking right here showing me where the center is. So I can easily align it with the center of the skirt. So now we can pin this together and make this one piece. Now it's time to add some Velcro to the back. Here's the Velcro we will be using. One side is fuzzy and the other side is spiky. I'm going to first glue the Velcro strips into place and then I'll sew it to give it extra strength.
got a petticoat underneath for her to have some volume and poofiness to her dress. This is something that I found in my extra OMG clothes. I think it belongs to one of the newer OMG dolls. You know, there comes a time in every makeover where you realize that it's just too plain looking. The dress is okay enough, but I think we can do more. I'm gonna take this ribbon and I wanna put some underneath her little flippy flaps. I'm gonna cut this ribbon into two pieces. So down the center. The centerpiece on her bodice, I found these perfect nail charms in my nail charm collection. Surprise, surprise. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to her bodice using some resin. And then I'll paint it blue later. And now let's cure it into place. Now I'm gonna paint the gem using this color. And now, guess what? Princess Peach gets some gloves. I'm gonna attach her hands back on. Let's see, we have to brainstorm an idea of how we can do the gloves. Maybe epoxy, some sugru, but that would cover up her joints and she wouldn't be able to move her arms. So they'd be literally stuck in one position forever. And that's no fun. We want posability for our doll. Maybe I could give her Barbie-like gloves. On the dolls that Barbie has gloves on, they're like little mitts. So there's no real definition in the fingers, but at least we can take the gloves off and move her hands around. Turns out I have just the perfect fabric for it. This is leftover fabric from my OMG Beetlejuice makeover. And it's a very nice fancy schmancy fabric with just enough stretch to forgive any boo-boos that I make. In case I make it a little too small. So we can give her a nice fitted long glove. Let me see the size I'm working with. So we'll leave that much for seam allowance and then mark the sides. And mark about where I'll need the hand to be. And since it is stretch, I think we can afford to go a little bit on the smaller side. For her thumb, I'm gonna mark with a pencil. I think about right here. So here's our little mitt. make a pattern out of this in case this turns out good. I don't want to lose uh, all the measurements. So I'm going to take my two gloves and face the pretty side of the fabric with the other pretty side. So good side to good side. And then pin them together. Since she's a princess, I wanna give her some super special shoes. So I'm gonna make her heels extra shiny. How I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna add some of this top coat that will be cured with a UV lamp. And once I've got that on, I'll have my sticky layer so that I could add some of this glitter.
Here we go, the lovely OMG Princess Peach is finally complete. So, how do you think we did? I think it's pretty close to Princess Peach, but with our own little twist to it. Now, I've noticed a lot of cosplay outfits that have their own little version of Princess Peach's outfit, so I kind of took some inspiration from those and made us an OMG version of Princess Peach. Her hair was the hardest. It's really difficult to work with this kind of hair and try to shape it into fantasy shapes like Princess Peach's hair with all the little points and bobs and the bangs and everything. It's, it's not the easiest. I probably should have worked with yarn, but I'm still happy that it worked out. We've got a similar version of her hair. It's really crunchy and glued into place. She's got her beautiful crown made out of Warbler and Sugru. Sugru worked out really nice for her gems. Her earrings and her face up. I gave her lots of peachy tones in her makeup. Her eyeshadow, her lipstick, and her earrings were perfect because they were the right color and metallic, so they were already pretty and fancy. We just glued those on. Her gloves do look like cooking gloves, but it's the best we can do and make it still removable and also poseable so that she doesn't lose any of her poseability. The gem was also perfect. I love everything that I could find around the house that's easy and already ready made. Just like her little nail charm brooch in the front center of her top. Her poofy sleeves are super cute. I love poofy princess sleeves. They just make every outfit so much prettier. And here's the bottom of her skirt and her shoes we made all glittery. They're so pretty and shiny. And I've curled the back of her hair which is much longer than the front parts. And her hair is just as yellow as it can be from our yellow wig. And I still have plenty left over for any other yellow hair dollies. I had so much fun hanging out with you guys. Thank you so much for coming along with me while we made Princess Peach. I hope to see you again soon. Until next time, bye!